Hey guys, Zoliax here and welcome to a new Airlines Manager video. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit longer because I'm doing uh, three different types of aircraft comparisons on this one. Uh, we've got the short haul propeller aircraft, the short haul uh, jet powered aircraft, and then the narrow body uh, medium haul aircraft um, up until basically the, the low end 737s. Um, I will timestamp these if you want to go to a specific one. Uh, you can find the uh, times for those in the description below. Um, but without further ado, let's crack on with the propeller aircraft. Uh, so for these tests, I did well. All three of these tests were done on the uh, Bangkok to Ho Chi Minh route. Um, let me just minimise that, and you can see my spreadsheet for this one. Uh, plugged in all the results up the top here and we get down to the business end down here as you can see then the Q300 comes out as the most profitable as a percentage of the cost of the aircraft um, you know you're making more money per, per seat effectively uh, compared to the cost that you paid out originally Ran these aircraft um, up until the point where the highest wearing one, I think, was around 15% wear. Um, obviously, I stopped all of them at this point because the lower wearing aircraft. Then, obviously, that's where you, know, you, you earn money from the lower wearing aircraft because you don't have to pay as much of the maintenance. Um, plugged all these in for the A check and D check costs. Uh, the figures for A check per seat and D check per seat as you can see some of these cost uh, substantially more than others the Saab B340B for example costs near enough three times the amount to run uh, say a Q400 uh, obviously then as usual I go into my result to maintenance ratios uh, this ratio then should give you a rough idea of how much money you're going to make plus or taking into account how much money it's going to cost you to run this aircraft uh, bringing you the you know the most profitability overall not just how much money you're going to make but also taking into account how much money you're going to have to spend to keep it running um, again I do this A check and D check as two separate lists uh, this is because those of you playing in uh, professional mode the most efficient maintenance scheduling is A checks only and likewise in tycoon mode it's uh, most efficient to carry out D checks only um, so we have a look here then cheapest to maintain per seat the Q400 comes out top for professionals the HX followed by the ATRs Q300 Q200 and the ATRs are there the IL114 Embraer 120 Jetstream 41 and Saab 340B right at the bottom and uh, there those four are pretty much at the bottom throughout the entire thing so if you go to the overall conclusion then for the propellers as in the D checks it's pretty much again between the ATRs and the Q400s there's not a massive amount of difference between the two of them um, one thing that is worth noting with the ATRs uh, whether it whether it's the 72 or the 42 the 600 is always more profitable than the 500 even though you pay out slightly more the uh, the 600 variants can carry a higher payload which means if you go to the top here the even though obviously if you look at them in the purchase point uh, they both have the same number of seats all of these aircraft are configured so they have one cargo if you've watched all my previous videos you'll know that uh, having one cargo on your aircraft regardless of how many economy seats that you lose because of that still makes more money so always have that one cargo which is why the ATR six the dash 600s of the ATRs come out more because both of these will carry one cargo but the 600s can carry a couple more passengers as well so you know you're paying an extra four hundred thousand uh, dollars if you look at the 42 this, uh, dashes 400,000 you're making yeah what a grand and a half for every trip so it will take you a while to uh, recoup that extra full round but if you look overall 
And if again we go for the 42, 500 and 600, the number of flights it takes you to recoup your entire cost, the, obviously this is before maintenance is taken into account, 315 flights for the 600, 323 for the 200. And if we look at the maintenance costs of it, the Dash 600 is cheaper than the Dash 500 for both HX and DHX. Uh, and that is the same for the 72. The uh, HX and DHX are cheaper for the Dash 600. So overall, you go for the, uh, the 600 variants if you are going to go for the ATRs. Overall conclusion then for professional mode, Q400 is your go-to. Uh, so that has quite a decent um, capacity as well, uh, running at I think it's 74 with the one cargo, 75 with one cargo. Um, followed by your ATRs, uh, both variants dash 600s. Uh, I think any of those three is pretty much worth going for in professional mode. Uh, I think that more just depends on what kind of demand you have, you know, whether one of them might fit. Um, passenger wise better um, with a different capacity uh, as I said before right, Embraer's, uh, the Aleutian, the Jetstream and the Saab are just miles away from everyone else in this so it sticks with the Q series and the ATRs there. Tycoon then the ATR 72600 comes out on top the Q300 does beat the Q400 in Tycoon mode um, not by much, if I recall correctly. The Q point one zero two nine point one zero zero. So, you know, the uh, the ATR seventy two six hundred, Q three hundred, and Q four hundred are really close to each other. On here, um, so yeah, it's uh, and obviously the ATR forty two six hundred as well is really close to them. So, if you have any of those four, again, you're pretty much. Um, safe using uh, the dash 500 again won't make you as much money same as the q 200s and then again avoid the uh, illusion Embraer Jetstream and Saab for that right we'll move on then to the jet powered short hauls so this is your uh, CRJs ERJs and your uh, RJ85 uh, again ran this on the same route as well uh, so these numbers here should be pretty comparable to the previous um, sheet. Uh, as you can see, the ratios are actually lower. Uh, the, the numbers you get from the ratios are lower. And the number of flights it takes you to recuperate them is much higher. So um, my advice to you is the propeller aircraft are much more cost effective when it comes to the really short haul stuff. Um, obviously when it comes to the jet powered stuff you're paying for the speed basically um, if you have a route for example that's um, an awkward time so like with propeller aircraft if it's a 3 hour 15, a 4 hour 15 something along those lines uh, it might be better off to get one of the jet powered ones that will bring it to a nice round number so a 3 hour one where you could have Eight trips throughout the day, bringing it to a, a nice even 24 hours. Um, so again, yeah, plug this into the Bangkok to uh, Ho Chi Minh route. Uh, go down to the bottom then. The in maintain per seat, uh, the CRJs come out on top on here, pretty much in order. The 1,900, 700, 550, 200. Uh, ERJ 140 comes. In seventh, seventh is that seventh? Yes, it is. No, nope. sixth. Yeah, sixth. Try to count here. Uh, the RJ one four five and RJ eighty five kind of swap places between the A's and the D's, and the uh, one three five stone last. But when we take maintenance into account, the CRJ five fifty tops both of them. Uh, for HX, the one thousand it goes down in order again for the HX. So 1,900, 700. Uh, the RJ85 kind of sits nicely in the middle for both here. 200 slightly below that. And then the ERJs come in at the bottom. So my overall conclusion for the, uh, the jet powered short hauls 
uh, basically avoid the ERJs and stick with the CRJs. Um, professional modes, the, you know, the 1000 and the 550 are pretty much on par with each other and the 900 and 700 not too far behind. Uh, the RJ85 kind of sits nicely in the middle. Um, uh, the only advantage of the RJ85 is I think it personally it looks awesome so I use it myself uh, just because I like the look of it. Um, and then yeah, the ERJ is towards the bottom. Tycoon mode then, the CRJ550 and the CRJ900 uh, come out just on top of the 1000. Uh, so slightly mixing up the order there uh, for overall conclusion. Uh, the 700 kind of sits in that fourth place still. Uh, the CRJ200 and the RJ85, uh, I believe if we look here, they aren't too much different between the two. Well, we've got 0 0.0065, 0 0.0061. So, yeah, slightly better on the RJ85 uh, result to um, maintenance ratio. But, yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a much more expensive aircraft as well, which doesn't help. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty much even with each other, I'd say. And then coming up the rear end is the ERJs. Right, moving on then to the uh, small medium hauls. So these are your narrow bodies, your larger ERJs, and E190 E2s, E195 E2s, A220s. And I have chucked in the 737-500 and 600 and the A318-100. Um, if you've seen my Airbus and my Boeing comparison videos for the uh, 320 family and the 737 family, uh, I believe these ones did come quite near the bottom actually. Um, but it's just so you can kind of see a comparison for you know, this size of aircraft. Uh, yet again, with these, we're all configured with one cargo. So some of these. Um, I've got slightly you know, like the A220 100R and the standard 100 both have the same capacity, but the the R can't take as high a payload, which means I had to reduce the seating capacity for it to um, take that one cargo. So overall, then, once we take maintenance into account, just ignore those numbers. Once we take maintenance into account then, delete those two as well, because they're not important. The uh, HEC wise, the A220s do come out on top. Um, surprisingly the A220-100Rs uh, came out ahead of the 220-100, even though it's carrying more passengers. But I think this just comes down to, because it's a cheap the initial price is cheaper. Uh, what we buy, nearly nearly 10, 000, 10 million cheaper for the uh, the regional jet version, uh, the uh, category one landings. So it does come out on top just because it's cheaper, and because it is a cheaper to buy aircraft, uh, it's also cheaper to maintain because of that. If we look at the maintenance costs, you can see in HX. Uh, 360,000 for an A check on the R and 400,000 for the standard. And then when we go to D check, you know, there's nearly $300,000 difference between them. So you know, the maintenance comes into effect when it comes to the R. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty much standard when you don't take maintenance into account. They kind of flip from the two for the A check and D check. Uh, cheapest to maintain per seat, but when you take result and maintenance into account the R does come out ahead. Uh, for HX then the the new E2 variants of the ERJs are, are better off. 717200 is up there as well as well as the 600 737. Um, the A318 and the 737500 pretty much come out bottom of most of these um, so that's again I'd avoid them. Um, D check wise, again, the A220s come out on top. 
717 is up there as well. But then this is where the older ERJs come back up um, with the D checks. Generally speaking, the A check wise, you are better off using newer aircraft, and then D check wise, you're better off using the older aircraft normally, which is where the difference between the professional and tycoon come in. Right, overall conclusion then for these, uh, the A220 300 is your go to. Uh, it's high passenger um, capacity relatively cheap to maintain for the amount of passengers you're carrying uh, I believe it's got the same no, it does have the same capacity yeah you're carrying 160 passengers uh, it's cheaper than A318 and you're carrying yeah, an extra 34 passengers uh, not much more expensive than the 737s and you're taking an extra 28 passengers compared to them so your A220 300 that's for both modes uh, and then the A220-100R is again a go-to. Yeah, the A220-100R is a brilliant aircraft just because of the fact that it can land anywhere. Category 1 landing capability. Uh, the only downside obviously is it can take slightly less passengers if you want, well, if you have the extra cargo or that one cargo um, added to it. Uh, professional mode then the E2, so the 195 E2 and the 190 E2 are up there. It is worth noting that the the standard ERJ195 does beat the E2190. Uh, the 717-200 is also up there. I think that's up there on pretty much both of them. So again, another good aircraft to, to use. Down the bottom end, then the ones that you probably want to avoid. In professional mode, the Boeings and the Airbuses. The Sukhoi SSJ195, again, is another one to avoid. Um, and the ERJ-175 is probably a no-go in the professional mode as well and the 170. Probably the ERJ-190 upwards on that list you know, are probably your, your best bets um, but yeah, try and stick to the A220s if you can. Tycoon mode then, yeah again the A220s are up there and the 717-200 is also up there as well but then the older ERJs are there, the 195, the 175 the standard A220-100 slots in uh, in sixth place, and then as we go down the 170, and then we get to the the E2s, you know, second from bottom, and maybe half of halfway. Um, and again, Airbus, Boeing, Sukhoi, kind of just avoid them. Uh, the E2, Embraers, and the 190 again, probably not worth taking. With better options there to take uh, in tycoon mode. So that's the comparison for those three different types of aircraft. Uh, I think I'm going to do one more of these before I finish this like little series within the airline manager uh, tutorials I'm doing. Uh, my next one hopefully will be on uh, the long haul aircraft, uh, the twin engined long haul. So I'll run the uh, 767 upwards, so that'll be the 767, the 787s, and the 777s, as well as the Airbus A320s, so not the A320s, the A330s, the A350s, uh, I might throw in the A300 in there as well as one of the older aircraft. Um, I might also throw in the Aleutian 96 300 just to show people how that trumps everything because um, I've, I've already done a comparison um, of the quad jets bar the A340 so I had a, the A380 uh, Boeing 747 and the Aleutian I've already got their own separate video for the, the top of the range quad jets that are being used um, but I think I'll, sh I'll shove in the Aleutian into the uh, twin engined long hauls just to show what their profitability is in comparison to the others but that brings us to the end of this video so thank you for watching everybody hope this has been helpful for you in selecting your aircraft in the future um, if you've liked the video please don't forget to hit that like button and if you want notifications to the future videos please don't forget to hit that subscribe button 
uh, to get your notifications. But that brings us to the end, so thanks for watching guys, and I will catch you again next time. See you soon.